a weird, undemocratic voting system is gradually gaining ground in the U.S. It should be junked. Hello, I'm Steve Forbes, and this is What's Ahead, where you get the insights you need to better navigate these turbulent times. Election winners receive more votes than their opponents, right? Not under a novel system that has been adopted by Maine, Alaska, and a number of cities such as New York, Minneapolis, and San Francisco. Several other states are toying with enacting this arrangement. The arrangement got prominence when a Democrat recently won a special election to the House of Representatives from the very red state of Alaska. The system is called ranked choice voting. Here's how it works. Voters just don't cast ballots for their individual candidates. They also rank other candidates on the ballot in order of preference, second choice, third choice, and so on. If no one gets 50 percent, then the candidate with the fewest votes is eliminated and his votes are redistributed to the second choice pick. The process goes on until a candidate reaches 50 percent. Ranked choice voting advocates say it is more democratic. Your vote can still count even if your first choice loses. It discourages negative campaigning because candidates want to get those second choice votes. But how democratic is it if your vote ends up being cast for someone you really disliked and ranked at the bottom? It can happen the way the process works. Or a candidate who finishes third or fourth in the popular vote ends up winning after the votes are redistributed. Ending negative campaigning? Much of the attack ads these days come from allegedly independent groups that have no candidate fingerprints on them. The system can cause voter fatigue in a multi-candidate field. How many people are going to have the time to research scores of individuals for numerous different offices? Promoters of ranked choice voting say they're offended that candidates can win with less than a majority of votes who really don't represent the real wishes of the people. The cure for that has been around forever, runoffs between the top two or three candidates. Ranked choice voting could be gamed particularly on the local level where turnout is not high. A political party could flood the ballot with other party candidates. Politicians and parties will find the temptation to play games here irresistible. After all, the Democratic Party today is pouring mammoth amounts of money into Republican primaries to help candidates Democrats think are the least electable in a general election. A look at how ranked choice voting would have affected certain past election outcomes raises eyebrows. Take 1992, where he had a strong third-party candidate for president that most analysts believe drew votes from President George H.W. Bush. Bush, not Bill Clinton, would have been the victor under ranked choice voting. In 2000, ranked choice voting would have given the election deciding state of Florida to Al Gore, not George W. Bush. Ranked choice voting is a bad choice. I'm Steve Forbes. Thanks for listening. Do send in your comments and suggestions. I look forward to being with you soon again.